Thank you. Okay, um, uh, my paper, the title of my paper is Ethnic Based Politics and Class Solidarity in Ethiopia, The Missing Link of Political Relation in Contemporary Ethiopia. Uh, this is a paper, a working paper written uh, uh, as I am, uh, I was traveling from Addis to outside of Addis and I encounter a certain uh, political condition. So based on that, I try to write a sort of uh, this paper uh, wondering how uh, emancipatory politics such as ethnicity fail to bring solidarity, horizontal solidarity in Ethiopia. So I, what my aim is, the paper is more theoretical and also it's historical. It is a conversation between history, ethnography, and uh, uh, theory. So let me go to my ethnographic entry point. Uh, aren't you gone yet, it says. Aren't you gone yet? was a regular question a young Shushan boy in one of the towns of Ethiopia encountered from politically mobilized youths whom they call themselves natives. By calling him and other underclass workers, Shushan boys, porters, and etc. as a native I met this young boy in 2017 when I was traveling outside of Addis Ababa, where there's a southern part of the country. I didn't want to mention the town because this is an encounter in many towns of Ethiopia. So, it is better to uh, silence the, 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 the place because uh, it's a similar situation is happening in many places in Ethiopia. So are in yet outside of this town? Is a, this, this is a point in which I convinced myself I should write something about this because it's, I felt it. So in this town, I was crossing, I met this shoeshine boy working at the gate of one of the hotels where long distance travelers stop by for lunch. I had a brief conversation about this, his livelihood. He narrated how he came from one of the rural areas with his elder brother and other older boys for work and alternative livelihood in the town. He and his friends found a small town suitable for their survival. It has been more than four years since they started life in this town. He attends evening class while working at the daytime as a social boy at the gate of the hotel. He also serves the hotel as a porter. He is grateful for the town, which he calls it a home and a working place. The only problem he recently facing is the use of the town began to hustle him and always giving him an ultimatum to leave the town as soon as possible. Aren't you gone yet was the regular question he was hearing from the youth. He knew he does not want to leave the back to rural village. He was not interested to go to another town or a big city such as Addis Ababa. He sees the town as his universe, not just a place but a home. This has become a normalized news of many towns and cities in Ethiopia where a federal structure is designed and implemented to resolve what is known in the country, the national question or the nationalities question through identity-based demarcation of regions. So we see if you travel to many places outside of Addis, even in Addis also, people are being uh, uh, labeled as non-native and become victimized by these politics. Uh, this, I encountered this in 2000, 70. But since then, we see, we hear a lot of news about this, this uh, occurrence between the meeting place uh, of uh, people called natives and non-natives is becoming a political category. Uh, so I have to talk something about Ethiopia federalism. I think most of you know the Ethiopia Federation is a response to the nationality questions or the questions of nationality, which was the, one of the popular questions during the Ethiopian revolution uh, in 1970. So the questions that challenged the project of national state building based on the Westphalian model, which aimed building one Ethiopian nation out of different ethno-linguistic groups, otherwise known as nationalities. The nationality question in Ethiopia preceded in the 1970s revolution, even articulated long before the Ethiopian student movement. Usually we see it is the beginning of the nationality question is the Ethiopian student movement, but it is not. It was only in the late 1960s that the Ethiopian student considered the national equation, the question of nationality as a major concern of their movement. The question preceded the peasant movement or the, the peasant rebellion of the 1940s and the 1960s. I'm not doing general here, you know, the, the search for the origin, but the, I want to share with you that there is important work by the, one of the scholars of early 90, uh, early 20th century, 1910, before the, the first decade of the 20th century, a scholar called Gabriel Baikadai, you know, from the Tigray region, 
uh, wrote uh, two books, important books, which many people read and share. So Gabriel is one of the pioneers intellectuals who traveled to Europe and come back and wrote uh, theories, histories, and uh, politics in Hamaric in the local language. So, so I see the national question in, in the articulation of the national equation in his work, which is published uh, in the first decade of the 20th century. Gabriel critiques the uh, Emperor Manilik for marginalization of his home region, Tigray, which became the battleground for Shiftas and Lourdes. So he, he disproved many rumors about Menelik's involvement in that intra-regional conflict, but he also critiqued Menelik for his reluctance to stop the conflict and create condition for development in the Tigray region. It is a similar situation, history is repeating itself in, the, uh, in his work. Today also the, the federal government is also, you know, there is a tension, polarization between the federal and the Tigray region, which for Gabriel is, uh, you know, marginalizing the Tigray region or the delinking between the Tigray and the federal, the, the central state is, uh, is, is, a political, is a wrong politically. So he advised the central government to engage the Tigrayan uh, region politically. So it's a very, uh, uh, it's a, a kind of history is repeating itself today, where I'm not saying that the central government is marginalizing, but the politics seems similar, uh, at least a polarization. So in Gabriel's work clearly shows that the hegemony of the Shoah region, the city uh, of Addis, uh, geographically situated at the center of the present Addis Ababa, and its surroundings sociologically dominated by Amhara and Oromo population. As his imagined state is symbolized through association, he expects the leadership of the association to be inclusive of all its parties. The national equation for Gabriel was the quest to have an inclusive and non-partial -part state apparatus. The reconfiguration of the political is defined to make it more inclusive and participatory to the extent limit the power of the king in that time. So limiting the power of the central government and in making itself, uh, making it democratic is uh, the national equation for Gabriel uh, in that time. So he used the concept of association and democratizing the Ethiopian state and making it more representative of nationalities and region was his prescription. So this was Gabriel Baikadani writing in the, the end of the, in the beginning of uh, the first, uh, the 20th century, 1905-06. So, so then what happened is after that long 1960s and 70s, we, can, we, have, we have witnessed the Ethiopian student movement, uh, a journal of Ethiopian student movement called The Challenge, uh, published articles particularly written about uh, what most writers term as a nationality question or regionalism in that time or national question. Andreas Schete, Hagos, Gabriel Jesus, Melles Ayale, Alan Muhabtu, Alan Limekon, and many of them wrote and debated about the national equation before the, 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 you know, the, the coming of the revolution, then even after during the revolution. So the debate between these students of the national equation was articulated. Um, articulation of a historical contradiction born with the formation and consolidation of the Ethiopian modern state uh, in the, the late 19th century. The national equation is fundamental for the central, sacred, and delicate issue of Ethiopian people's movement. The most dialectical of all questions I said during in the, in the, in the, in the literature. So for, for, from, from this debate, you know, I, I, I can't uh, summarize the debate here, but to, me, to, 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 to share with you what I have read from them is, uh, most writers, most writers of the student movement use the national equation, rejecting both tribe and the nation as a concept. They call it national equation or the question of national. So they first clarify the conceptual and theoretical stand. Most also argue that the national equation is subordinate to class struggle and self-determination must be exercised with anti-feudal, anti-imperialist outlook, as well as with the political imagination of socialist construction. In, in, in resolving the national equation, mainly in regional form, all rights such as equality, self-rule, autonomy, and democratic participation in the political space must also consider the right of minorities anywhere in the country. Above all, self-determination as a resolution of national equation is the road towards building democratic, egalitarian, secular national state out of the empire of the Ethiopian. What Gabriel articulated 50 years before uh, or at the beginning of the century is similar with what Marxist radicalized student imagined through the language of difference. Few organized only behind the national equation 
and the Stanley solution of cell termination after cessation, uh, you know, the gorilla fighting, then we see a uh, cessationist movement, uh, uh, which, you know, history also favors them, uh, defeating the DERG. Uh, and the numerous resistance movement mobilized against the DERG behind the, uh, the national question. I think now when I understand it retrospectively, disregarding the clash question. So the federal system is a response as a politicized identity, nationality, created homelands for selected majority communities, otherwise known as nation, nationality, and peoples. Subnational mother state is created for linguistic groups such as the Tigray, Amhara, Harari, Oromo, Somali, and Afar, while mixing two or three in Gambilla and Benishan. The exception in this federalism is the Southern Nation Nationality Peoples, which has now become the hub of many types of questions. Created one region comprising more than 50 uh, communities with their own language. Therefore, by granting at least to the major ethnic groups their own mother or subnational states and to others to the right of self-administration at local government level, the federal system tries to enhance regional autonomy and also answer the question of uh, inclusiveness, the, the, the avoid exclusion, and uh, democratize the state in a certain way, at least theoretically. These mother states created an assuming a homogeneous group inhabiting a defined territory connecting culture and territory. Federalism, uh, federalism, regionalism for granted, take regionalism for granted, and it also created its where never existed. So this is what's happening. So the, it, take, it, it took for granted the national, the region, regionalism, uh, create identity and territory together. So now it is trying to re reproducing itself in multiple ways. These regions and local states become homelands as a mother state for those ethnolinguistic groups. So other states who don't have mother states, they want a mother state now. So we, Ethiopia is now uh, is uh, you know, full of these type of questions. It is not about self-administration. It's about ownership of the land, ownership of a home, uh, which where nobody will say, aren't you yet gone? This a historical reading, a historical reading of disregard territories inhabited by Ethiopian heterogeneous ethno-linguistic groups who often become marginalized minorities, non-native, non-indigenous subjects of Ethiopian Federation. The ruling party PRD for, for the last three decades tries to use other means to unite, to calm down this type of questions through you know, one party system, through developmental state, through developmental discourse. It united this, it silenced this type of question. It, the divided communities is centralized through state power, through a party system, a centralized physical system, the developmental state, all this tries to depoliticize the mass, tries to silence the mass from asking a similar question for the last at least 20 years. But now, with the popular politics and the political... Thank you. Popular protest and a political transition. So, Ethiopia experiment federal system for the last almost three decades. But for the last four or five years, we have witnessed a popular protest that intensified for the last, at least, I mean, five years. It's checked the federal system. It's checked the, the EPRD model of decentralization and centralization. Decentralization in one way and centralization in another way. This in turn result in the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, brought a transformational politics, a reform politics opening up in, in the recent moment. A new reformist group within EPRD emerged out of the, you know, the ruling party and mainly from the two largest communities, the Oromo and the Amara, that led the transformational politics from the above and also from below, from the popular use from the two regions, the Oromo and Amara. I'm not saying other elites and other popular forces are not participating, we're not participating in the protest. Protest has been widespread in Ethiopia in different uh, overt and you know, you know, hidden means. So the protest symbolized communities' determination to resist depoliticization, which I was talking about. It began the self-repoliticization while transformational period signaled the rebeginning of politics in post-protest Ethiopia. The protest also signaled the possibility of trans ethno linguistic solidarity when the Oromo and the Amara communities act in concert under the motto of Amaroma. However, such solidarity appears tactical and accompanied by essentialist assumptions like brotherhood, eternal friendship, and so on. So it's not a solidarity. It was a tactical alliance to, to defeat the, the Ethiopian, the Tigrayan ruling party. So the essentialist race, one origin of all Ethiopians, mainly from, from Amara and Zoromo, they had one, you know, one unity and so, so one origin. And during the processes, and however, uh, 
they try, this didn't avoid violence after the post. Uh, in the post, in the protest season, it was very successful. But in the post protest season, in the political transformation, transition, we see, we witness violence, and this tactical alliance is no more existence, at least in the popular uh, arena. Uh, the mobilization of native and non-native become a, tra you know, a trend in the contemporary Ethiopia and many parts of Ethiopia. Despite far-reaching reform process, democratization, and the beginning of politics accompanied by the discourse of what we call Kimaidemmer from the ruling uh, party or the leader, the prime minister, which is solidarity, unity, synergy, harmony, uh, ethnic conflicts erupted, causing large number of internally displaced people. Many people were told to leave the, the town, the city, the place that you were inhabiting. Aren't you yet gone is a question which many people faced and they were forced to go out from the different people, from the place they used to live. The federal structure which set out to answer to the national equations gave birth to the native question. National equation without class solidarity led to native question and horizontal competition, polarization and conflict in many parts of Ethiopia. Class blind deployment of the national equation produced native and non native category of political subjects, and the question appears to be native question, which defined non native as the other, if not as an enemy. So, what is a missing link? This is my, I don't know, I, I like history, I like ethnography, but uh, this is the core part of my, 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 my thesis, the thesis of the presentation. This is a product of the missing link between the nationality equation and the class consciousness. It is a pitfall of national and class consciousness in Ethiopia today. The student movement or Gabriel Baikada articulated how they should uh, you know, democratize the Ethiopian state without horizontal conflict, at least without horizontal conflict. But the, the student movement also articulated class solidarity is important to, uh, to, to protect the, the, the people of Ethiopia from class, from capitalist, global capitalism. Otherwise, it will be creating a bourgeoisie state or creating a lot of political elites in different parts of Ethiopia. Even if secession is possible, it is creating the bourgeoisie state that doesn't help the Ethiopian people. So class consciousness, so the pitfall today is both national and class. So my paper is about the missing list, the absence of class consciousness in Ethiopia, despite the inequality, despite many people share the, the level at a similar level, they are not targeting the ruling class. They are not articulating the ruling class is manipulating uh, the politics, controlling the politics. So self-determination Ethiopia today is translated as determination about nativeness of a community, the claiming of a territory according to, uh, accordingly to make a mother state or homeland. The native question is the quest for subnational state construction based on nativity with no articulation on the nature of the national state domestically or its role is a global capitalist capitalist. Maybe it is a way capitalist is penetrating in the global south at the moment in which by creating a lot of fragmentation polarization, capitalism is penetrating the global south. I don't know, that is a very a stretch reading. The question has completely forsaken uh, class analysis as a national question, the native question. Yeah. Forsaken class analysis, the issue of self-determination is articulated only as a means of resolving the native question by forming a regional state or district or local state in the name of a nativity or a cultural autonomy attached to a territory called homeland today or Kellen or Wereda or so on in Egypt. The land equation, which was inseparable from the national equation in Ethiopia, is reduced to demarcating the native homeland, irrespective of the nature of land relation and that historically emerged in the country. With no relevant debate on the role of the national state within the global capitalism, anti-capitalist emancipatory politics tend to be absent in Ethiopia today. Even in the context of global capitalist crisis today, there is no discussion on the opportunity to exploit the global context with the leadership of the national state. Even the developmental state project with its catching up project faced a challenge with domino effect widespread of the quest for motherland to the nationality, than as to the, to the natives or nationalities. Moreover, while the nationality question was articulated towards democratizing the Ethiopian state, the tendency now is to create a, perhaps the most decentralized despotism with its devil authoritarian future, manifested both at the national level, state level against the popular masses or at the local, at the local level against the non-native minorities. So a kind of decentralized despotism is emerging in Ethiopia today. 
at the local level or at the zonal level or at the regional level, power is uh, dispersed, but despotism together dispersed. So democracy is compromised at the national level, also at local level, and when the class question is absent, and that is where the political predicament in Ethiopia. Thank you very much.